standing by. This is the conference operator. Welcome to the Cryoport Inc. year-end 2020 earnings call. As a reminder, all participants are in listen-only mode and the conference is being recorded. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To join the question queue, you may press star, then 1 on your telephone keypad. Should you need assistance during the conference call, you may signal an operator by pressing star and zero. I would now like to turn the conference over to Todd Fromer, Managing Partner of KCSA. Please go ahead. Thank you, operator. Before we begin today, I would like to remind everyone that this conference call contains certain forward-looking statements. All statements that address our operating performance, events, or developments that we expect or anticipate occurring in the future are forward-looking statements. These forward-looking statements are based on management's beliefs and assumptions and not on information currently available to our management team. Our management team believes these forward-looking statements are reasonable as and when made. However, you should not place undue reliance on any such forward-looking statements because such statements speak only as of the date when made. We do not undertake any obligation to publicly update or revise any forward-looking statements, whether as a result of new information or future events or otherwise, except as required by law. In addition, forward-looking statements are subject to certain risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results, events, and developments to differ materially from our historical experience and our present expectations or projections. These risks and uncertainties include, but are not limited to, those described in item 1A, risk factors, and elsewhere in our annual report on Form 10-K filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission, and those described from time to time in the other reports which we file with the Securities and Exchange Commission. It is now my pleasure to turn the call over to Mr. Gerald Shelton, Chief Executive Officer of Cryoport. Jerry, the floor is yours. Thank you, Todd. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate your joining our earnings call today. With me this afternoon is our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Robert Stavanovich, and our Chief Scientific Officer, Dr. Mark Sawicki, and our Vice President of Corporate Development and Investor Relations, Thomas Heinzen. As a reminder, we have uploaded our 2020 Year in Review document to our website. It can be found under the Investor Relations section in the Events and Presentation section. This document provides a review of our recent financial and operational performance and general business outlook. If you have not had a chance to read it, I would encourage you to go to the website and download it. As with previous quarters on this conference call, we will provide you with a brief general update, and then we will move to addressing your questions regarding our company's results. 2020 was a historic year for Crowport, culminating in a transformational fourth quarter during which we continued to effectively execute our strategy and significantly strengthen our global platform by closing on two milestone acquisitions. These strategic acquisitions provide our client base with the ability to leverage our ever-expanding supply chain continuum as we extend the breadth of their relationship with Cryoport, whom they have grown to trust with their irreplaceable coal chain therapies and materials. But that is not all that happened. Let me set the stage by a brief review of some of our accomplishments during the year. The following points. We raised a total of $390 million through a $115 million convertible debt financing and by issuing a $275 million convertible preferred to Blackstone Group to support the acquisitions of CryoPDP and MBE Biological Solutions as well as for the further build-out of our competencies. We acquired CryoPDP, established a foundational network of logistics centers in EMEA and APAC. We acquired MVE Biological Solutions, the number one producer of cryogenic systems worldwide, further establishing CryoPort as the number one end-to-end -end provider of temperature control supply chain solutions for the life sciences industry. With the two acquisitions, we have expanded our global presence to 30 locations located in 13 countries. Our network gives us a new advantage when serving global multinational customers and also provides redundancies and backup that reduces supply chain risk for our customers. 
we initiated the build out of two additional fully integrated bioservices and logistics centers, both of which will be online in 2021. We opened our first fully operational joint operated logistics center for cryoport systems and cryo PDP in Osaka, Japan. We renewed and extended our commercial relationships with Novartis and Gilead. The number of cell and gene therapies we support grew to six, including the global launch of BMS's Rishyanya. On the, on the R&D front, the highlight of 2020 was the expansion of our Cryoport certified cool line of shippers and solutions to support all temperature ranges from minus 80 to control room temperature, including the Cryoport Elite shipper and advanced proprietary and scientifically designed ultra cold shipper and our revolutionary and patent pending Cryosphere shipper, expected to be launched during the second half of 2021. We ended with cash and cash equivalents and short-term investments of $93.3 million. And in, in, in uh, January 2021, we completed an underwritten public offering led by Morgan Stanley, Jeffries, Lyric, and UBS, raising net proceeds of $270 million. As a result of these strategic milestones, Crowdport is now positioned to further leverage our global platform with a family of companies that provide mutually reinforcing global market-leading temperature control supply chain solutions for the life sciences. Our financial results reflected this strong performance and our continued momentum in these markets we serve, especially in cell and gene therapy. Total revenue for the fourth quarter of 2020 increased to $48.4 million compared to $9.2 million for the fourth quarter of 2019, a year-over-year -year gain of 423%, with organic growth of 36%. The total revenue for the full year 2020 increased to $78.7 million compared to $33.3 million for the full year 2019, a year-over-year -year gain of 132%, with organic growth of 26%. In summary, Crowport delivered. We surpassed our business and financial goals for 2020 despite the challenges of, in, of the environment due to COVID-19, staying true to our course of creating leading new, market, new markets through technology innovation. We focused on differentiated solutions, services, and products suited to the complexities and pressures of the life sciences, temperature control, supply chain challenges. And with that, I'd like to turn this call over to the operator to open the lines for your questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To join the question queue, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. You will hear a tone acknowledging your request. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing any key. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. We will pause for a moment as callers join the queue. Our first question comes from Puneet Suda with SVB Leewing. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Jerry and Robert. Thanks for the question. So, um, uh, first one is um, could you elaborate if, um, a, a on MVE if there was a, a step down sequentially from the third quarter to the fourth quarter? It just wasn't clear in the release. And then, can you elaborate on the COVID contribution uh, from any vaccines during the quarter as well? Wait, yes, Benit. Uh, uh, actually, there was a step up in the fourth quarter for. Uh, MBE, uh, MBE met our expect expectations and uh, is doing very well and will continue to do so. We have a nice backlog and uh, and, and the transition has been uh, very smooth. Um, in terms of, of contribution from COVID, we, as you know, we support uh, about um, 16, is it 16? 29. Huh? 29. It's 29, 29 clinical trials uh, related to COVID. Some of those are, thera thera uh, are therapies and some of them are cures. Um, and, you know, we do some uh, re-icing or replenishment for 
for for coldness in in some parts of the world. But we we don't play a main role in COVID. We are a cell and gene therapy company, and we've stayed focused on that on that on that uh, on that competency. Uh, so just following up on that, I mean, sh should we not expect any COVID contribution for the entire year, despite uh, you being involved in a number of um, you know trials and therapeutics here? For the well, it, it'll be minimal. It will be minimal to need. It won't be anything major, for sure. Okay, and and um, this question is maybe for just Robert as well. Is in terms of um, um, the, you know, I know you haven't traditionally provided guide, but at this point in time, we you know the, the business is fairly large with MVE and cryo PDP uh, total revenue. So uh, if you could maybe just help us elaborate, uh, you know, help us understand if if uh, the combined MVE and cryo PDP or separately, should they be growing at least 10% uh, or higher? And and, um, and and wondering if you are comfortable with the consensus, which is very close to about uh, you know 200 million uh, for, for the full year. Is that something uh, that we could um, you know expect um, uh, going forward uh, for, for the full year? Yeah, I think yeah. Thanks, Puneet. I think we've talked about it in the past a little bit in terms of the the revenue synergies and and the the growth potential for MBE biological solutions and then also cryo PDP and cryo PDP in specific with the synergies created together with cryoport systems. So I think I think in general in terms of analyst expectations for the year, um, where we're comfortable with analyst expectations in terms of the growth and the change in growth rate you know, from their historic growth rates. That obviously you know, will happen over time. So you'll see you'll see you know, the actions that we're taking, you know, bear fruit throughout the year um, to change you know the the profile that they've historically had. And a big driver of that is obviously the cell and gene therapy space and and some of the synergies that we've already identified. In terms of giving guidance, that's something that we do discuss on a regular basis. Um, at this point in time, we're not giving guidance, and the real reason around that is because of the dynamics in the regenerative medicine space and cell gene therapy space, that continues to be our core focus. And, and this market is at the very early stages of growth, um, but we'll certainly revisit that over time um, you know, as the market grows and matures um, to see you know, what type of guidance we'll give going forward. Okay, and just clarifying the first question, Robert, that I had in, in uh, MVE, um, uh, there is a step down in gross margin, so I just wanted to find out: uh, it, it was that largely a uh, step down in gross margin in, in the corporate gross margins? Is that largely due to MVE? Uh, and was there a uh, step down or a step up actually from third quarter to fourth quarter sequentially for MVE? I, I think if you look at 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 MVE and Cryo PDP, you know their margin profiles are different. Um, if you look at the legacy business, the legacy business has been performing on par with, with the past. Um, and then you have the, the, the margin profiles of crowd PDP, which is lower, and MV, which is slightly lower, um, you know, drive revenue, um, drive the margin for Q4 down. Again, that's another area that, that we believe we can, we can achieve higher margins, um, specifically because if you look at, for example, cryo PDP, um, that is now moving into the cell and gene therapy space, which is a you know, higher vi value, um, kind of high quality and, and, and touch um, solution, um, there's opportunities for margin increase in the services offering that cryo PDP brings to the table. Okay, got it. And last one, if I could, and I'll hop back into the queue, is, is I'm wondering if you're expecting any impact from Zintaglo this year. Thank you. The impact for Zintegla will be minimal on our overall revenue. Um, you know, it is a it is an orphan product, uh, so it doesn't have uh, significant volume at this moment in time. Um, you know, it's you know the impact of, of obviously the, the notice is out there to us. It, it doesn't look like it's a, it's an, it's a more of a patient specific. It's not a, a therapy specific issue. Um, and so, based on what we've heard, you know, through the Lyric con uh, conference and others by the CEO of Bluebird, they don't anticipate it being a long-term issue. In either do we? Okay, thanks. The next question comes from Brandon Coulard with Jeffries. Please go ahead. 
Hey, thanks. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. In, hey, Jerry. Uh, if we look at the commercial biopharma revenues, they're about flat, I believe, in the fourth quarter sequentially. Uh, first, how did that compare uh, to your expectations? And then secondly, you know, now that you have five commercial programs there, you started last year with just two. Um, how should we think about growth uh, of this line item in 21? Well, let Mark, why don't you take that? Yeah, so, um, you know, what we're going to see is, is all of these therapies operate in a stepwise fashion. So, you know, the, the early launch, obviously, of the Novartis and Kite products, um, that initial transition over the last three years, you know, they, they, in the geographies that they were supporting, they, they started to hit, a, you know, a patient absorption of their manufacturing capacity, so the overall growth rate on those is normalized a bit. Um, with Tacardis coming online the middle of last year, um, as well as uh, Brianzi from BMS, which is a, a larger volume product, um, you know, they'll have a much larger contribution to growth this year. Um, and so we do anticipate that our overall growth rate as it relates to commercial will pick back up significantly this year um, uh, versus what it was at the end of last year. Hey, Brandon, just to correct you, there's six commercial therapies we're supporting, not five now. Correct. Uh, there's the Orchard product out there also that was approved at the end of last year. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the, both the Bluebird and the Orchard products are, are orphan products, so they're smaller volume, uh, so they won't have as, as market of an impact. Um, but, but the Brianzi and the Decardis launch um, will have a bigger impact on, on obviously top line for commercial. Okay, thanks for that uh, clarification, Tom. Um, in terms of the new logistics centers that you opened in Japan and Singapore, uh, were those pre-existing PDP locations? Have you built out liquid nitrogen capabilities there? And um, you talk about you know, any incremental uh, planned investments in other logistics centers that you expect to make over the course of 21. Well, uh, Brandon, they both are new, uh, new locations. We relocated uh, uh, our um, our uh, Singapore operation with a crowd PDP, and then the uh, the uh, uh, Osaka Japan location is a new location. They both, uh, of course, are, are, out, are outfitted to handle liquid nitrogen and all cryoport products. Um, and, and then, of course, we have the two uh, supply chain centers uh, that are being developed in the uh, in, in Morris Plains and in Houston. Uh, and uh, we will be developing uh, over over this next year uh, more logistics uh, locations, uh, but it's, uh, it's 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 premature for me to tell you exactly where they are. But we will keep you up to date on those on those uh, on that development. Great, I'll hop back with you. Thanks. The next question comes from Andrew De Silva with B Riley Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. I uh, hope everyone's well, and th thanks for taking my questions. Um, I'm also sorry, I'm still going over the 2020 uh, interview doc, uh, but, but could you just uh, start by um, just educating me on what support entails for COVID-19 vaccines and therapeutics? So historically, with, with logistics, for example, you know, you manage the entire process and are the, the, the largely the sole logistics provider. Uh, how do we think about, you know, uh, cryoports, legacy business, cryogene, cryo PDP, uh, as it relates to that? Um, and then kind of segment that into two parts, particularly interested if the therapeutic or the vaccine are actually a cell and gene therapy. Uh, should we think about that as more of a legacy uh, where you entire, uh, control the entire process too? Uh, Andy, Andy, I want to make a few. few uh, first of all, this is a good question, and I'll make a few comments, and I'll turn it to Dr. Sawicki. So, um, first off, we we are not focused on uh, on on COVID and on COVID vaccines. Our focus is on cell and gene therapy, uh, in, in within the life sciences. Um, all of our skill sets and capabilities are definitely transferable and could be used in that way, but. When you think about vaccines, you're thinking about massive distribution and you're thinking about uh, the, the manufacturers are thinking about economies and the way they get those things, the, those vaccines out. Um, we're dealing with quite something that's quite different. We're dealing with irreplaceable 
uh, cell and gene therapies. And, and, and our, our services are not the least expensive on the market, and, and not, even though our skill sets are t t totally transferable. And then the fact of the matter is we have consulted with a number of states and authorities, including Warp Speed, uh, you know, on the project. But, uh, but we don't expect anything significant coming from COVID in terms of, you know, betting the ranch or betting our future on, on COVID. That's not our game. Our game is cell and gene therapy. As I said, we do support... 26 uh, uh, trials in cell and gene therapy. Some of those are therapeutics and some of those are, are cures. Uh, and with that said, you know, Mark, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, Jerry. Um, so it's, it's actually 29 programs. 29. Yeah. Um, and, and largely our support comes out of the opportunistic relationships that we have with our existing client base as well as folks that have come in. And so in many cases, they'll ask us to maybe do some sort of uh, storage aspect of, you know, drug product from a clinical or, or you know, vaccine basis. Um, it may be something, some limited distribution requirements for high or challenging, you know, distribution lanes, or it could be things like re-icing, right, or you're replenishing dry ice in, in, in the field. Um, you know, uh, you know, like Jerry said, our focus is not on, on, you know, capturing a very low margin, very large volume business line. That's not our, our in our wheelhouse. Our focus is on those, those, um, you know, ultra high touch uh, requirements and support elements. So, how about if it is a cell and gene therapy, for example, that is also a. COVID therapeutic. I, I guess that's really if, where if it was I'm a cell and gene therapy that had a cryogenic. Yeah, if it was a cell and gene therapy that had a cryogenic storage and distribution requirement, um, the the likelihood of us being involved would be much higher. And and we are involved with design. You, uh, you know, so right. so, but it's just not pervasive, and it's not with the the ones that have been released, Andy. Maybe I can help right, you. Right. Out no, I way. absolutely Maybe. understand that. This is Tom. Sorry to barge in, but. The, the, the cell and gene side is not on the vaccine side. It's on the treatment side, trying to keep those folks that have COVID from passing away or, or staying in the hospital for a lengthy time. So that's where you've seen the, the I'll call it the cellular play. The, the vaccine side is either like the J&J, &J, the, the traditional vaccine or an mRNA vaccine, but those are in high volume and aren't on, uh, cell therapy. Okay, useful caller, thank you. Um, and, and then just looking at the fourth quarter and then kind of uh, comparing it to consensus and the previous questions, um, you, you, you almost hit $50 million for the quarter. Consensus is at $200 million for the year. Historically, you know, the cadence has been as, uh, as a new year starts and progresses, you show material growth off the fourth quarter of the previous year. Um, is there any reason to think that should deviate this year, uh, or was there any significant kind of one-time revenue benefits during the fourth quarter of 20 that we should be kind of thinking about as we, we can wear on new initiatives and, and build up our revenue for 2021 and uh, 22? Yeah, no, thanks, Andy. Um, look, overall, I think we were very satisfied with the Q4 revenue results. You know, we had strong um, growth and revenue for, for our cryoport legacies of cryoport systems and cryogene. And we had strong results from cryoPDP and MBA biological solutions compared to their revenue historically and, and, and also in terms of what our expectations were. Um, so that, you know, just first and foremost, and especially looking at a first quarter after a transaction is completed, I think, you know, those are very good results. In terms of looking into 2021, um, the only thing that you should have in mind is um, there's a little bit of seasonality in some of the businesses. So if you look at MVE, there may be some seasonality in terms of the, the purchasing. Um, but ultimately, you know, as we said, you know, in terms of revenue growth, we, we expect revenue growth uh, where we're comfortable with the projections from the analysts. And, um, you know, that's all I can say at this point. Okay. Uh, last question, just as it relates to commercial revenue. I know that you were talking about this in uh, previous questions, but um, sh should we expect most of the growth from commercial revenue in 2021 to come out of, you know, established products, primarily Kim Raya and Yaskarta, or should we expect most of the growth year over year from commercial launches that are um, really just starting, like Yaskarta and Bristol Myers Squibson products? 
So there's two factors. So factor one is an existing product line is expansion of their global, global capacity, right? So if you look at a Kite Gilead, you know, they're launching a new facility in Maryland, Frederick, Maryland this year. If you look at Novartis, they're launching a new facility in Stein, uh, Switzerland this year, as well as announced uh, manufacturing partnerships in Australia, for example. Um, so, you know, based on when that capacity comes online, the legacy products should see increasing revenue associated with volume uh, around that capacity increase. You then combine that with the, obviously, the new product launches, um, you know, Brianzi being obviously the most evident from a volume-based standpoint, um, that, will, that will definitively uh, have a, 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 an increasing contribution to the overall number. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for taking the questions. Good luck going forward. Thank you, Cindy. The next question comes from Richard Baldry with Roth Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks. Um, if we looked at pro formas of the three separate entities sort of prior to integration, two kind of approach called a break-even zone. One MVE was pretty solidly adjusted EBITDA positive. So. Against that backdrop, can you talk about how much the current quarter or December quarter profitability sort of inhibited by integration issues, how quickly the company could sort of resurface the level of prior profitability it would have had as sort of three entities? Or are there some initiatives for spending and growth that kind of should take us backwards a bit first as a combined company before we move uh, forward again? Thanks. Hey, Rich, that's a, a really good question, and um, I want to make a few comments and then turn it to, to, to Robert. Um, you know, as I've said before, we, we certainly didn't buy these companies uh, for, for, you know, what they had been doing. We bought them for what they will do and, and what they do for uh, Crowport in, in carrying out its, its mission. Um, both companies, if you, if, you, if you look at that, they were part – both companies, both Crowd PDP and MBE, were part of very large companies, and and as such, they were insignificant. And in fact, you know, we know that there were, there were not much attention was paid in terms of direction, support, et cetera. And 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 we were able to peel them out. That we were able to get a spinoff. Now within Crowdport, within Crowdport, MBE and Cryo PDP are very important. They're strategic, as a matter of fact, and so, you know, and 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 they will play a role in 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 Crowdport as we march forward in in cell and gene therapy and and the cell and gene therapy advance. So, so they're going to be performing differently than they've ever performed in the past, and and all of that is will will as as Mark said earlier, it, it takes time, or or Robert said that, but it, it does take time to make these transitions. But we will make those transitions, and you'll see all the metrics, you know, moving in in a positive and, and upward direction. You'll see, you know, the top line growth rate accelerate. You'll see the uh, margins change because because they will be participating uh, with Crowdport in a much more much more uh, important way in, in in markets that they heretofore have either not participated in or participated in on a very limited basis. So with that, I'm going to turn turn it to Robert. Yeah, yeah, and just to clarify, occasion where we say it takes time, you know, this is just life sciences and it is regulated. We're obviously moving forward very aggressively. Um, if you look at you know Q4 and the and the full year of of 2020, you know we had acquisition and integration costs of roughly 12 million for the year, um, and and 4.4 million for the quarter, and that includes also a, a step up in inventory. That really only impacted Q4 and will not impact um, the fin financials going forward. Um, so you eliminate, you know, some of those additional charges, the the intangibles, or if you just look at, you know, the the adjusted EBITDA alone. You'll see that, you know, for the year we were around break even, but for Q4 we were about 3.9 million in in positive EBITDA. Um, so you already see you know, some of that profile, you know, pushing through to the bottom line. Yeah, I think going forward, yeah, as Jerry mentioned, that certainly there will be some investments made to to make sure the platform is ready for for a more aggressive growth growth profile. Um, but I think we're also very keen on on maintaining you know the the high EBITDA you know contribution um, that that you know, MBE was able to to drive historically, 
and, and, and continue with, with a very similar profile. And maybe and just private, for clarification. Yeah, go ahead. No, you finish, please. On, that, on Cry PDP, we already talked about you know the 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 growth driver being you know their focus on selling machine. They are they are to some extent also piggybacking on on Cryport systems, and allowing us to offer a broader solution to our existing client base in the selling gene therapy space, and and kind of the higher margin synergistic revenues that we'll be bringing in in 2021. Um, maybe just to. to finish up that point then could is there ways that you'll be able to communicate with investors sort of over the near term intermediate term about successes you're having accelerating the the two acquired entities or you know have pulling them into the cell and gene therapy space so that you know while we look at a blended growth rate that will come down just mathematically we can start to understand the successes you've had integrating the two or will it be pretty difficult to sort of break away any you know, key metrics that kind of help us along that path. Thanks. You, you, Rich, um, uh, you'll see that in the, and certainly in our overall results, uh, but but the way we manage the business is it, it won't lend itself to to just <coughs> just just going after you know individual components of, of the business. There, it there are it is a family of companies. We do operate and we do have metrics and so forth, but we. We're also careful and mindful of the environment that we're working in, so um, we'll we'll keep that in mind. We'll do what we can do to 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 help you understand that in the future. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly what those measures should be. Robert, do you have anything to add to that? No, I, I think we we understand that that investors you know want to understand how the acquisitions are are progressing and what impact they have on on Cryoport Consolidated. So we'll we'll certainly look at at indicators and means. To be able to to you know drive that theme as well, um, especially in the early stages, um, you know post the acquisition, uh, we do want to make sure that investors understand you know the value that these acquisitions you know, bring to Cryoport, and and so we'll we'll look at you know indicators that that will provide that information. Thanks. The next question comes from David Saxon with Needham. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, and, and thanks for taking the questions. Um, my first is just on the, the margin pri profile of the, the combined business. Um, you, you've talked about expecting to see a dip in the gross margin, and, and we obviously saw that this quarter, um, but you have the expectation of, of you know, getting to your longer term goal of 60%. So um, first, I guess, you know, can you just help us think through the, the, the cadence to that 60%? And then um, on the operating margin, you're targeting 20 million in cost energies from the cryo PDP acquisition. So, um, you know, should we think about that as, as, you know, a linear path over the next call it five years or so? Um, and then in 2021 specifically, uh, the consensus is, I think, around, you know, a low to mid single digit operating margin. Um, so is that something that's reasonable in your, your view? Yeah, you know, a number of questions there. I uh, appreciate it. Um, look, I think in terms of the gross margins, you know, you, you already framed it correctly. Uh, we, we, we didn't expect, you know, a, a combined lower margin because of the different um, – Profiles that each of the companies bring to the table, and and we'll seek to you know driving that up. Um, it will happen over time, and this is not something that's going to happen you know within the next few quarters. Um, but certainly you know, you'll be able to see some margin improvements based on you know the the client our client um, client base as well as you know the overall value of a solution that we're we're bringing to market. Um, I think that's you know probably the, the the on the margins you know as much as I can say at this point in time. I think I think there's one other thing that ties in there, Robert. Also, that we we've identified, uh, David, a um, hundred million dollars of um, of synergies over five years, and those syner while those synergies will not be linear. I mean, nothing in this in this business of the life sciences is linear, uh, but but they we we are on a pathway to achieving that already just in one quarter. And, and things are, are moving in that direction. So we will 
we will achieve that over you know over the next uh, over the next five years that hundred million dollars of synergy and you'll also see you know cryo PDP moving you know more <coughs> more into the cell and gene therapy space uh, as as we as as they benefit from being a part of cryoport a, a, a part of cryoport Inc and you'll see some of the same thing happening in an MVE so. Again, as to Robert's point, everything in this business has to be uh, validated. So let's just say that Cryo PDP is working with uh, Cryoport Systems on a particular project. It still has to be validated. Just because it's working with Cryoport Systems doesn't mean it's to, it's a, it's going to be instant. So it has to be validated, and so all of that takes time. It just is just it's just a requirement in the life sciences for surety and for making sure that. You know, uh, efficacy efficacy is delivered and and conditions are controlled. Uh, if that makes sense. So yeah, and then just to add to that, you know, in terms of of that that you know, line of thought, you know, what that does create though is is you know, since Cryport Systems, as an example, is an accredited um, you know, client partner, um, we can bring Cryoport um, Cryo PDP, um, you know, into our client base quicker than we otherwise could. Um, and then, because life sciences is regulated, once you're in, you're in. It's it's a it's a very strong relationship, and 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 strong um, retention, as we've shown in the past with our current client base. Got it. That's helpful. And any any comment on you know consensus being a low to mid single digit operating margin? Again, I think you know we're we're actually assessing kind of our our path forward. You know, from from my perspective, without giving guidance, you know, we're 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 certainly expect you know the the margins to improve, and and overall, we're again we're comfortable with the the analysts you know as a whole. Okay, got yeah, it. David, you um, should, and you, then David, David, one other thing though, you 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 really, you you really should look at us as 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 market leaders and and continuing to be market leaders. So. Our number one initiative is 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 all around market share and being and and and, and just and anticipating market needs just enough that we you know we're always the leader in the market. So, um, so so look at look at market share uh, first. We're not racing. We will be profitable, but we're not racing to profitability. We we could be profitable, you know, instantly at any time. Uh, but uh, it's it's all about uh, market share and keeping up with the growth and opportunities in the marketplace. Got it. That's helpful. And then um, when you uh, bought MVE, I think you said about 70% of, of their sales uh, were through distributors. So can you talk about any plans um, about converting that to, to more of a direct sales channel? Um, and, 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 you know, if, if that is the case, you know, how, how much of a margin um, benefit that would have or, or price? And well, we I don't have plans. Up. Yeah, we don't, we don't have plans to convert the distributor network into a, a, direct, uh, a direct sales force. I mean, that distributor system is extensive. It's an extensive and sensitive um, nerve network for the company. We will enhance it, but we will not replace it. Okay, very clear. And sorry if I missed this in the uh, the document posted, but can you just talk about you know the outlook for Cryoport for BLA and MAA filings for 2021 and you know potential cadence of of approvals? Uh, thanks so much. Yeah. So as we had mentioned, we're currently sitting at six. Uh, approved therapies that we're supporting. We anticipate upwards of another potentially uh, 21 filings in 2021, and we had a, a, a total of uh, seven that were filed in the second half of last year. All of last year, sorry, yeah. Great, thank you. So the cadence is definitely starting to pick up. The next question comes from Jacob Johnson with Stevens. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for taking the questions. Uh, maybe first question on MVE. If I'm not mistaken, I, I think there are some, some new products coming from them. Uh, can you just remind me what these were, when they will launch, and, and maybe how much they could add to growth at MVE? 
Well, the new the the new products that you're referring to are the is uh, the Vario. The Vario is a, a, a multiple multiple um, uh, temperature uh, freezer. It can dial from minus 20 all the way down to minus 196. And the second product you were talking about is is Fusion, and uh, Fusion is a <clears throat> self-sustaining liquid nitrogen powered. Uh, freezer that never has to be refilled or replenished with liquid nitrogen, and and we have another size of that, uh, you know, coming out very shortly. Um, and we haven't disclosed the impact of either of those on our revenue yet. Okay, got it. And then Jerry, you've got I think something north of 300 million of cash. You were acquisitive last year. Should we expect M&A in 2021? And maybe if so, could you just remind us of your M&A criteria and any capabilities you'd like to add? Well, what you should expect is that we continue to carry out our mission. We established our mission uh, six years ago, our strategy six years ago, and we continue to carry that out. And that's what you should expect. And so that will be a combination of, of robust organic growth uh, and acquisitions if they uh, if they are available. You know, it takes uh, it takes a seller and a buyer, and so we can't always map out when acquisitions will be available. Uh, we do have a robust pipeline of acquisition candidates, and um, we are are discussing. Uh, relationships with people all the time, but that can go all the way from, you know, from customer to strategic partnership to, you know, to acquisition. So, um, so that's about as much as I, I can tell you about that. The, the kind of acquisition that we are looking for, uh, you know, it's both in the vertical and the horizontal. So we'll we'll look at adjacency adjacent spaces to packaging and. Um, Logistics expertise and 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 software or informa or informatics, um, and we'll look at those in in more depth. We'll look at tactical acquisitions that that could make sense to us, and as well as strategic acquisitions. Um, but we want them to be well run. We want them to be accretive, and we want it to be a situation where management wants to stay on uh, with the companies and continue to propel the companies. That, that hopefully are already in a growth uh, growth profile. So we're looking for healthy, accretive companies to to add to our portfolio when they when they meet uh, our requirements for carrying out our strategy. Got it. I'll leave it there. Thanks for taking the questions. The next question comes from Mike Goki with KeyBank Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, guys. Thanks for the time here today. Um, you know, starting off with Mark, you know, with the 21 filings expected this year, you know, I'm looking at the company list and it seems like there's a fair amount of companies without a currently approved mar uh, product on the market. So, you know, how many commercial new commercial therapies do you expect to support versus kind of market expansions of, of your currently supported products? You know, that's difficult to, to, you know, absolutely ascertain, like you said. I mean, a lot of these companies in this space um, don't have a, a historical track record of product approvals. Um, you know, however, that's offset by the FDA being a little bit more inclined to move forward with these types of projects and programs, um, you know, based on the nature and the criticality of the need in, in this space. Um, you know, uh, from our perspective, you know, we anticipate multiple additional approvals, um, but I can't really speculate beyond that for you uh, because it's, you know, obviously we don't control the FDA and we don't control um, their, the, the, in those specific entities. You know, all we can do is ensure that we're fully prepared to support any filing and, and commercialization activity that they engage on on, on, on their behalf. Mike, I'd probably also add, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them got absorbed by larger pharma or biopharma. Right. Very helpful. And then, you know, Jerry, or, you know, this may be for Mark too, but, you know, talking to the new shipper launch, so, you know, I think that'll be more targeted to gene therapies in the minus ADC range. Uh, can you kind of just talk to the uptake of that? And is it, you know, is it targeted towards more your existing clients who are going to shift over from, you know, the lower, lower storage temperatures, or is it kind of new customer acquisition there? Thanks. Well, it's kind of interesting that the, the product was actually designed and developed in conjunction with, our, with one of our clients. 
um, who uh, helped, uh, who was specifically in the gene therapy space and took a look at the market and felt that there was nothing sufficient on the market to be able to support their, their activity on, on a very aggressive portfolio from a rollout basis. Um, and so we worked with them jointly on, on the developmental aspects. Um, the, the, the product itself will be significant and differentiating into the market space and is, is designed to support actively uh, both viral vector distribution as well as gene therapy, uh, clinical and commercial distribution. Great. Thanks for the time, guys. Thank you, Andrew. Our next question comes, again, from Paneet Suda with SVB Learing. Please go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, just thanks for taking multiple questions today. And I appreciate that you answered a number of them and um, obviously a number of efforts underway on your new product launches and temperature ranges. Um, uh, what I think I wasn't clear on is, is the split of MBE into uh, a animal health and MBE separately. So you did almost seven million in the animal health, and uh, Robert, please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, um, just wanted to get a you know quick follow up from you on how sustainable is that animal health business? I mean, this is sizable business now. Um, and, and given the potentially competitive nature and the lower margin nature of it, uh, how sustainable is this uh, business um, under M MBE um, longer term? Thank you. Well, Paneet, this is, uh, this is exactly where MBE started its business, uh, is in um, animal husbandry. Uh, it's a highly sustainable part of the business. It's been this way for something like uh, 50 years. Uh, so it's it uh, you know we it, we're very very confident and 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 comfortable with that part of the business we we dominate that that uh, part of the business uh, having an extremely high share of that market so we're comfortable with it. Yeah, and just to add, I think the animal health space is one area where you will see synergy activity between Cryoport Systems and and MBE over time, uh, based on the nature of both of both uh, relationship to that market. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. This concludes the question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Jerry Shelton for any closing remarks. Thank you very much, operator, and uh, thank all of you for your questions. It was a, it was a terrific uh, dialogue and uh, we appreciate them. Um, we've entered 2021 in the strongest position we've ever been in. Uh, with an unrivaled leadership position in animal health, reproductive medicine, and especially biopharma, pharma markets. As a result of our ingenious team of people, investments, and expanded footprint, we have a very broad reach within the industry and are dedicated to continuously scaling our business with focus and purpose. I'm confident that we have the unique capabilities, competitive mode needed to needed to extend our support and commercial regenerative medicine therapies around the globe as those anticipated therapies come to market. To further advance our leadership position within the industry, we are continuing to invest in enhancing our platform by developing best-in-class, highly differentiated, and specialized solutions that are redefining the temperature control supply chain for the life sciences industry and providing the best services possible to our clients. Overall, we are delighted with the way the company performed in 2020 with 36% organic growth in the fourth quarter and 26% for the full year. We delivered robust growth and we continue to see increasing traction in the regenerative medicine industry as we close the year supporting a total of 528 trials and six commercial therapy agreements. Strategically, our two acquisitions position us well for excellent growth in 2021. With robust indications across the life sciences, we anticipate that 2021 will be another excellent year for our company. We want to thank you for joining us today. And until the next meeting call, we bid you a good evening. This concludes today's conference call. You may disconnect your lines. Thank you for participating and have a pleasant day.